Hey, this is Adam Driscoll, and today I'm going to be showing you the basics of running PowerShell inside .NET. So we're actually going to create a C# -sharp console application that uh, executes just some uh, basic PowerShell commands, and we're going to do some error handling and uh, play with the various um, methods that you can call on the PowerShell SDK. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new .NET application. So I'm going to do .NET new console. So that's going to create a new csproj and um, program.cs file inside my current directory. You can see here it's a really basic uh, csproj file and a very, very basic um, program file here. So the next thing I'm going to do is I am going to add the PowerShell SDK. So I'll do .NET new, uh, .NET add package Microsoft PowerShell SDK. Once I do that, it'll go out to NuGet and install that into my csproj. And you can see here I'm running uh, the PowerShell SDK version 7.2.2. So next, we're going to add up our um, program.cs file to um, start using the PowerShell SDK. So I'll do using system.management.automation. So that's kind of the namespace of PowerShell. It's always been that, like that since I think version one. Um, so you're not going to find many things in Microsoft PowerShell SDK uh, that you're probably after, um, but this is kind of the root namespace. Um, from there, we're actually going to create a new PowerShell instance. So you can use the PowerShell class to do so, and once you do that, um, you'll have access to the uh, PowerShell um, runtime. So uh, what I'm doing here is I'm putting a using statement in front of me here because uh, the PS object is actually disposable. And if it e exits the scope, we want it to get disposed. Uh, so next, kind of the easiest way that you can run something in PowerShell is by using the add script uh, method. And this lets you just kind of put whatever PowerShell script you want in here. So for example, if I wanted to do start process notepad, I could then invoke that. And now, if I press F5 and run my um, .NET project, you can see it's going to offer um, to generate the launch.json file for me. I can click that. And what I'm actually going to change this to is external console. So we just kind of see that pop up, or external terminal. And then we'll go to our program CS. And if I hit F5, it is going to compile it and execute it. And you can see here that Notepad started because I called start process with Notepad. Um, another way to do that is to kind of break up the um, script into multiple kind of sections. And this is good when you want to pass in um, .NET objects. So if I wanted to do the same thing, I could do add command start process. And instead of putting the uh, parameter directly in there, um, what I could do is I could assign a variable, for example, uh, and we're just going to call this name, and we'll call it notepad again. And then there's two um, methods you can call on here, because it's kind of um, a fluent API. So uh, I could either use add argument and pass in that name variable. So that should work because it's just going to put it in kind of at that position. So you can see my notepad opened again. Or I can use add parameter, and then I think it's a file path. So you can, then you can do it by parameter name. So um, now when I run it, um, it should pop up my notepad. Yep. So let's say I got this wrong. I got path instead of uh, file path. So what that's going to cause is, um, oh. That works too. <laughs> um, my path. So now you can see we got a parameter binding exception, and we have to handle this exception inside of our command line here. So that's what we consider a terminating exception because it doesn't know what this particular parameter is. So what I could do there is I could easily do a try catch just like I would um, in any other C sharp application and uh, catch that um, that and log it in a very efficient manner. So we're just going to have this stick open here. And now when I uh, execute this, uh, it's not going to throw an exception because I didn't change this parameter. <clears throat> Oh, 
and you can see it, it logged it instead of uh, throwing it. Um, the other way that uh, PowerShell can kind of throw um, errors is um, we call them non-terminating errors in the PowerShell world. And you can actually check for those types of errors by using the had errors parameter after the script is executed. So these won't actually throw an exception, but you can actually access these errors um, by using the streams property of PS and then going to the error stream. And the error stream is just an array of errors. So I could go through here and I gotta put a little in in here. And we could just do another console right line here um, on our non-terminating errors. So I think we might be able to manage that by um, putting in a process that uh, doesn't exist with get process. Let's try that. Yep, couldn't find a process with the name notepad. So that's kind of how you handle um, non-terminating errors. Now let's look at um, how to uh, return output. So let's actually get rid of this parameter. And um, there's a couple different ways that, well, there's kind of two different ways that you can get output. One is via PS um, objects. So if I do var uh, result here, and we're just calling get process. And I'm actually just gonna set a breakpoint in here so we can kind of inspect this. When I press F5, it's gonna execute that get process command. And if we look at the results here, you'll see that we have 349 objects. Um, they're PS objects and um, you know they have properties. They're kind of like a dynamic object. Um, you actually could use a dynamic. They actually work with PS objects. Um, but in this um, case, you can actually see the different properties and kind of inspect them in a, a kind of a powershell -y way. You can also access the base object, which will give you the actual system diagnostics process. Um, if you don't want to have to unwrap that yourself, you can actually do that in here. And um, instead of a PS object being returned, what it's going to do now is it's going to unwrap that um, PS object and return it directly as the .NET type that you're after. So in this case, I now have um, these process objects directly uh, in my variable without having to unwrap it manually. So these are kind of like the real bit basics of just executing some basic commands inside your PowerShell scripts. Um, in a later video, I'll kind of get into more of the details of using run spaces and persistence in terms of uh, session state and that kind of thing. But I just kind of wanted to go through a general overview of getting you set up um, in your .NET application to uh, easily run PowerShell scripts.